Well, hello, booktubers and video lovers and movie lovers alike. Today is Saturday, and as you know, V.C. Andrews' newest TV movie on Lifetime is premiering tonight. Now, judging by the cover, I will say right now that we have, I assume, Ruby, who has red hair because the character in the book had red hair, and I assume Ms. Naomi, Naomi Judd is uh, Grand Mayor or Catherine. So... I see we have a cast, and at least it's good that we have redheads playing grandma and granddaughter, so pretty good. Um, like a good cover. I don't know if it's a world movie series event, this will be, because this is Lifetime after all, and based on what they did with the Delaganger and the Castile series, it remains to be seen if they're going to be accurately going to capture this movie. I'm guessing that this movie was filmed in Canada, probably because more, how do I say this, more COVID restrictions, you know, it's cheaper. You know, it's more protocols were in place, whatnot. Even though the movie and the books took place in Louisiana, and quite frankly, I think I don't think you can really capture the true essence of Louisiana in Canada, but we shall see. So anyways, I'm going to go through each of the cast and determine, just based on the drawings rendered on the cover of the book, if by looks it's going to work or if I think that they can accurately capture the essence of the character from the book or not. So without further delay, let us go with the first one in three, two, one. And we have on the right, the actress that is playing the title character, Ruby. And on the left, this was the rendering in my estimation of who Ruby was, because when you look at the original cover, her face is what appears. Now, the actress who's playing her is named Rachel Bano. So I don't know much about the actress, although she does have actual acting experience, so that's a good sign. Um, yeah, I could kind of see that. She's kind of got the very innocent, very timid look um, and everything like that. And she does kind of actually have a likeness to the character, at least the image that I've had in my mind since I read the book many, many moons ago. Um, based on seeing the previews and everything, I don't know if she's going to have the essence of what I envisioned Ruby to be. But I definitely do think just based on the look alone and the stance and everything, I think that they got it right casting for once. If we looked at Heaven... Um, the lead character from the Castile book, Heaven, number one, had red hair, even though the character in the book had long, dark hair and whole flower blue eyes. So at least they have the physical attributes correct. Let us move on to the next character. Three, two, one. And we have Ruby, the title character's twin sister, Giselle. On the left is the original artist rendering, although in the artist rendering, it looked like she was shorter than Ruby. So were they identical or were they like the Olsen twins and looked that were fraternal that looked alike to ponder. Now, it would have probably eaten into all of the Lifetime movie budget for the movie if they actually tried to have one actress play both parts. So thankfully, they have, I assume is the actress's twin sister named Karina Vano, who also has some acting credits to her resume as well. Now, sometimes one twin is the actor, the other twin isn't, is into the acting field. As, at least in this case, it isn't. Now, I will say she's got the red hair, and definitely, just based on this picture, she definitely has Giselle's uh, haughtiness down. Um, does not have the timidness of Ruby. Um, so definitely, I do see, just based on the look and the essence, she does have it captured perfectly. So just by looks alone, I'm looking forward to what she will bring to the movie. And I'll discuss... When I did my book review, I discussed how there was some potential that was set up greatly in the book that didn't get follow up on Giselle as the other character. But I don't want to spoil it, but my personal opinion, Giselle was set up perfectly in the first book and is not fully realized in future books. So that's all I have to say about that. And on to the next one, three, two, one. And of course, we wouldn't have a V.C. Andrews story without some, lo some lovelorn love interest of the lead character. This is Paul. Now, as you can see on the left rendering, he looks very pensive, very sensitive, very much in love with Ruby. For obvious reasons, and I don't want to spoil it, they cannot be together. Um, but if you can look on the right, uh, I believe his name is Sam Duke. Looks perfectly who I imagined Paul to look like. And if you look at the artist rendering on the left and on, him, on the actor, I actually think just by looks, perfectly cast. Now, I do see Paul, it looks, at least the actor Sam Duke has a very intense look. And of course, you know, in the book series, you know, Paul isn't accepting of Ruby not being with him. 
So I can see a little bit of intensity and determination. And this looks like just from this picture alone, the actor per perfectly conveys that, in my personal opinion. And on to the next one. Three, two, one. And of course, in VC Andrew Land, it's not possible to only have not only one male lead, but another male lead. This one is Bo, who has known in Giselle for pretty much their whole life. And basically because of obligation, they're together. Now, are they in love? Are they not in love? That is to be determined. Now, from what I've understood, his, the actor's name is Ty Wood. Based on how he was described as in the book as being very mischievous, very flirty, very sensual, and very sexual, um, I definitely do see the guy on the right, I guess his name is Ty Wood, does have that look down based on the artist's rendering of the on the left. Um, looks a little cocky. I think, actually, perfect casting. He's got the look. He's got the stance. Let's see if he's got the acting talent. Hopefully, we'll do three of three, not just two of three. We shall see. On to the next one. Three, two, one. And we come along to Grand Mare, the woman that raised the lead Kaido character from birth to the age of 15, 16 years old at the start of the book. Now, she took over primary child care when Ruby and Giselle's mom passed away. Now, as we can see, you know, whenever anything is adapted into a movie, of course, everyone has to not have gray hair because that seems to be scary. Um, as we see on the left, the artist rendering, and this was back in the 1990s, was a more older grandma type, very, you know, mystical into like spirits and healing and whatnot. Now, on the right, as you know, is Naomi Judd is playing Catherine slash Grand Mare. Um, just by looks, I don't see it, but just based on her voice and seeing her in other things, she does have a very kind of a soothing maternal type of thing but also very kind of like somebody I could see probably playing someone who's very superstitious um, and is Southern. But from, I don't think from Louisiana, but from Kentucky, I believe was Kentucky. I will see, I'm interested to see how she is, if she's going to have the essence of Grand Mare or if she's going to put her own spin on it because she does not look, as we can see, does not look anything like the Grand Mare artist rendering on the book. So we shall see. Um, on to the last and final Comparison of the artist rendering on the cover with the actor, performer, in three, two, one. And here we have who I always believed was Daphne. The blonde hair, the very um, regal look, kind of a snooty, very controlled how it looks to the world. And when I heard the girl, lady on the right, who I have grown up with watching on and off on Young and the Restless since the 80s, Laura Lee Bell, when I heard that she was being cast as Daphne, I thought, I could see it. I don't know why, but I just instantly knew that that was a perfect casting. Just like Kelly Rutherford was so perfect as Ju as Julian in the uh, Castile series. Laura Lee Bell, perfect casting. Um, if you could just even look, though, she's got the blonde hair. She's kind of, this picture, she's smiling, though, but she does have a couple of other pictures where she's kind of got that stance. Um, I think this is probably the casting coup, in my opinion, the best part that fits with the role perfectly. Now, I'm interested to see if she's going to just play Daphne as just an over-the-top villainous, or if she's going to play her more like how it was in the book, which was a lot more underhanded, more about appearance, and, you know, very controlled, trying to keep her emotions in, but seeing Ruby brings back, in my opinion, the affair that her husband, played by, in the movie, Gil Bellows, had with Ruby and Giselle's mom. And... The one thing I've read in the synopsis is, is that she, they're keeping the appearances means everything. And that Giselle knows how to do it. Ruby, not quite so much. Or is that the case? Or is that the opposite? We'll have to tune in. All right, just from the look and seeing her acting on and off for years on Young and the Restless, perfect casting. Perfect, perfect casting. Now, there is um, a couple of other key roles in the book, in the story. One played by Crystal Fox uh, from originally in The Heat of the Night, but it's also on The Have and the Have Nots. And uh, Gil Bellows from Ellie McBeal um, is playing the father, the husband that cheated on Daphne and is the father of Ruby and Giselle. Now, I don't have an artist rendering of him to do a compare or contrast, so I'm going to end it here. But I do look forward to the movie tonight, and I'm excited to see how it turns out. Fingers crossed it's going to be deliciously trashy fun which we all need in this day and age. Peace out.